now look to Chen Po Kong to continue the case for the opposition of this motion. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor to be here tonight to join this debate. While China exerts influence over its borders, I do not believe China is interested in benefiting the world, but instead, in China's own self-interest, especially that of the red elite. On March 29 of this year, one week before US President Donald Trump was scheduled to meet with Chinese President Xi Jinping at Mar-a-Lago Mar Resort, the family of Trump's son-in-law, Jared Kushner, suddenly terminated a major business deal with China's Anban Insurance Group. Under the widely public suspicion of a conflict of interest, the CEO of Anban Group is Wu Xiaohui, who is married to the granddaughter of former Chinese leader Deng Xiaoping. In recent years, Chinese companies have been on a buying spree overseas, especially in Western countries. Chinese companies engaged in overseas buyouts. Almost all have one thing in common, a connection to the red elite. For example, Anban Group, Wanda Group, Alibaba Group, these leading Chinese companies for overseas buyouts each involves a large number of the red elite, with more than 20 family members of current or former Chinese Politburo Standing Committee members being their investors or shareholders. If the Anban Kushla deal had gone through, the Kushla's family will get much more benefit than usual. The Chinese side was willing to take a loss because they wanted to gain an advantage. Or as the Chinese saying goes, cast a long line to catch a big fish. Mr. Wu was targeting not Mr. Kushla, but President Trump. Intending to use his connection with Mr. Kushla to influence Trump's policies on China. One time, at the end of a negotiation with Kushla's family, Mr. Wu was so ecstatic that he burst out in English to all who were present, I love you! <laughs> this aborted deal exposed the objectives of the overseas investment by Chinese companies. More than mere economic benefit, they also involve Beijing's political objectives and international strategy. Chinese companies to buy Western countries, they focus massive Chinese companies, massive acquisition you know, overseas, targeting land brand companies and high end enterprises. Their main purpose is to buy the innovative technology of Western countries and bring and transfer the technology and production lines to China, leaving share companies behind. Chinese companies seem intentionally target Western countries' lifelines of technology, economy, politics, and security. As Western countries had, have begun increasingly to suspect these motivations, the failure rate of Chinese buyouts has increased. Last month, New York Times posted an editorial. China wants fish, so Africa goes hungry. According to this article, with China's own authors heavily overfished, Chinese government supports its fishermen sailing further to exploit the authors of other countries, pushing the fish stocks to the brink of collapse. Chinese government commands a fleet 
of 2,600 vessels, 10 times larger than, than the United States fleet, all heavily subsidized. Chinese government is concerned with its own domestic needs and its regime security much more than the health of the world's oceans and the countries that depend on them. Talking about in the South China Sea, China claim 80% of this maritime region belongs to China. China's so-called territory boundary, the Lai Danxi Line, encircles entrances to Vietnam, the Philippines, and other countries. China, Beijing, may rationalize this because the name of the South China Sea includes the word China. According to this logic, Mexico can claim 8% of the Gulf of Mexico, and India can claim 8% of the Indian Ocean. China, even though a permanent member of UN Security Council, has long ignored UN resolutions on North Korea, on North Korea's nuclear threat. Even sanctions China took part in drafting and voting to support have not affected China's trade with North Korea. Last year, North Korea carried out two nuclear bomb tests. However, China's trade and aid to North Korea, Korea actually increased rather than decreased. Chinese companies such as Industrial, Hongxiang Industrial, have been providing nuclear material, materials and nuclear components to North Korea for years, implying Chinese support of Pyongyang's nuclear aspiration. It wasn't until the beginning of this year, under the enormous pressure to rescue the imperiled Chinese-American relations under the Trump administration, that the Xi Jinping's government began implementing UN resolutions by temporarily halting coal imports from North Korea. Speaking of economic development, Chinese officials often proudly show off. China only took more than 30 years to oxu the Western countries for hundreds of years. But how did this come about? Plagiarism, cyber attacks, large scale of parity of intellectual property rights, this is not only Chinese individuals or enterprises' behaviors, but more so the Chinese government, the Chinese army's behaviors. In summary, as the world's second largest economy and newest superpower, China's overseas impact is growing by the day. However, its methods processes and results all show that, generally, China's overseas impact is not constructive, but destructive. China and China is not, is not contributing to world peace, but has introduced danger and risk to the world. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Thank you all.